Hogsworth from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I'm going to be looking at Game 6 of the tiebreakers played between Ponomaryov and Brizone at the 2011 World Chess Cup. So this is Game 6 of the tiebreakers after, I believe, they exchanged points in their, their two games of regulation. So this, uh, you know, technically, I guess this is Game 8 of their entire match. Played, I believe, in like three days. So, um, you know, they've probably been banging heads on, on any kind of preparation. So, Knight F3. And now Ponomaryov is um, playing a, a relatively calm variation against the uh, Queen's Indian defense by Bruzone. And so White's, you know, White's got the bishop on G2. It's going to be doing a nice job of putting pressure on that undefended bishop on B7. And, um, you know, I think that explains why Brizon chose knight a6 here, because if d5, white's going to get a pretty decent initiative and, and amount of pressure in the position with knight to e5 right away. Just opening up that bishop, and it, it's just kind of a pain in the neck for, for black to, to play. So he tries knight a6, trying to get the development first, and then maybe play d5. So, you know, he's got a little more developed position. And I guess if knight e5, then, then c6 is the idea. But knight e5 also, so c5, you know, opponent or, or Bruzon here wants to open up. If c6, like I was thinking, I mean, maybe, maybe this is an older line trying to reroute the knight or, or play knight to d7 as well. But I guess, you know, Bruzon, he's got to fight. So he plays c5. And this creates a lot of tension in the position because the pawn on d5 can become very weak. Exposed by, by pawn Amariov, he just plays rook c1 here. And now queen a4. So definitely a good spot to put the queen. And <clears throat> if knight c7, maybe white's going to go ahead and win that uh, the two bishops. Maybe you could see something like this. And uh, it, it seems like maybe White's going to win a pawn. Definitely got a lot of pressure on the, the d5 pawn. So knight c7. So instead, Brizon tries taking. And bishop c5. And this, is, I guess, was the idea, you know, with, with playing pawn takes here, is that he was going to open up. After bishop c5, he's opening up this rook on the e5 knight. The problem is g5... So, you know, both players playing really fast here. This is a five-minute blitz game with a three-second increment. So both of them playing really fast, and it seems like black is going to be winning a piece in this combination. Just, you know, deflecting the bishop from, from defending the, uh, the knight on e5. But the problem is, and I think Ponomaryov maybe had prepared this sometime before, or maybe he's just, just calculated really well. Um... I, I think he had maybe prepared this this queen a5 move before. Maybe he maybe he thought it through. You know, he took about a minute here after takes because he could have backed out and, and played knight b5. In, in which case, maybe knight c5 and, and black has a, a perfectly fine position. So here I think Ponomaryov, you know, he thought for about a minute and he played queen takes d4. Cal yeah, I mean, maybe he did calculate it out. Bishop c5, kicking the queen away, and now g5, trying to unearth the, the knight on, on e5. So, Ponomaryov with a quick sack, <coughs> and uh, now bishop takes g5. So, he only got two pawns for the knight there, but black's king is in a complete mess. And because of this pressure on the d5 pawn, you know, white's going to win the d5 pawn for sure. So... Here, I, I think queen d7, Bruzon spent about two minutes on this. So maybe he underestimated queen to h4, but, you know, that seems like a very basic move. Also, maybe the bishop can come to h3 now. Putting the pressure, it's, it's essentially winning. Queen h4 essentially wins the h7 pawn while maintaining the pressure on the weakness on d5. So I thought here maybe black's, black's best chance... I thought, you know, d4 is obviously impossible because the bishop... I thought knight b4 was an interesting idea to prevent the white queen, you know, from the straight transfer. But it just doesn't work. I mean, I mean um, it, it simply fails miserably. I mean, even just queen b3, the knight's got nowhere to go. 
and d5 is going to drop, and, and white's probably going to pick up the rook on a8 somehow as well. Like before, I thought it was interesting. I, I think maybe the best move here that I could really see was rook e5. Just really trying to defend the pawn on d5. It seems like white can win it. You know, white, white would probably play rook d1. But white's going to win. White's going to win that, that d5 pawn. I don't know. Maybe, maybe knight c7, maybe black can hold on. Even still, this seems to be a relatively simple way. And <clears throat> I, you got to think, I mean, white's got the, the complete three pawns for the piece. His king's really safe. Black's king is not safe. And he's, you know, I don't know. White's got an edge in the end game. If he even wanted to take the pawn right away. So, so I think rook e5... You know, white could also play bishop f4. Maybe this is a little better option because the rook is kind of trapped up here. And, you know, if rook back to e7, I don't know. This is better because maybe black can play d4 and the, the bishop is defended. So, you know, rook e5 I, I thought was black's best defensive chance. But Brazon, I don't know what he missed. I mean, he thought for two minutes here, half his time. Queen d7, just simply queen h4, and, and now white is going to get really four pawns. He's going to pick up the h7 pawn, and the d5 pawn has almost got to drop in the center. It's so weak because of this bishop with this pressure. So queen f5, trying to defend, just dropping that pawn, and a very important pawn it was, and now a, a nice accurate combination by Ponomarev, who's moving extremely fast here. So, I, you know, the... The game is like almost over. Ponomaro is just moving so fast. The three-second increment isn't that much. And Bruzon's, you know, down to a minute and a half here. Ponomaro have definitely a great time to trade queens. If he takes, maybe this, maybe it's a little bit too ambitious. Although, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at this a little bit closer right now. I suppose if queen takes, king g7 would be a horrible mistake. Just picking up that knight. Maybe if queen takes king f8 and somehow the black king is safe and, and black is maybe can, you know, if he can regroup his pieces, start attacking the f2 pawn, um, maybe, you know, he's got a chance to hold the game if he can get a lot of activity really quick. But Ponomaryov just like a machine and the knight is in a dominating spot, <clears throat> simply e3. Just play it safe. I mean, he's he cause he's got all these four pawns. There's no need to risk anything here. The, the score was exactly equal in this tiebreaker. This was game two. They drew game one. So Ponomaryev, if he won here, he was going to move on after a huge match. So rook d8, and um, black doesn't really want to trade. You know, any trades are going to help white here because white's got all these pawns. So knight c3, Ponomaryev, he just wants to trade right away. And Bruzon... I think he should have kept the rooks on here. I, I think just logically because you know the four pawns are going to be so strong against this bishop or the knight. So when, you, when he's, you know, he's trading these rooks off, I think it was just a mistake. I think he should have at least kept one set of rooks on. I would have tried to keep both. To you know, The only chance would be that white's going to mess up and black can create an attack against white's king. So Brazon instead, you know, he was getting long time. Maybe he felt simpli simplifying would make it a little easier, but definitely, you know, it just makes it easier for white. So knight d3, black's getting a little bit of activity with b5 and b4 here, but um, really he's just kind of stalling. And Ponomaryov has got so much more time than black. So he finally starts with h4. And here Brazon just, I, I think he had, you know, under 10 seconds. He had, like, no time here. ponomar has got three whole minutes. And an easily, easily, you know, the pawns are just too strong. So he tries to create some mischief with the knight. But really, really, he, uh, you know, he was just kind of wasting time. Was unable to create any threats. I mean, I thought at least bishop g7, you know, bishop f8 to g7. If black can win that pawn, maybe he can actually get some counterplay with the A pawn. But Bruzon, I, I think, was just too shook up. He ended up just wasting a lot of moves with the knight. And now rook c6. Just wasting a lot of moves trying to pick this pawn up.
And here, Ponomaryov, um, he was able to play h5, and, and the pawns are just way too strong. Just no no problem. You know, Black's trying to pinpoint the e, e3 pawn. Knight c5, a good good intermediate move. Hit the rook, you know, get it off this third rank to play g4. So bishop f6, I guess it bishop b6, knight, knight d7. And now the knight's going to help the pawns roll. So he tried bishop f6, but... Knight d3, very nice move, defending this, also getting ready to help the, the king side pawns move in. And simply king e2, a great time to go back. The pawns are still going. And um, yeah, I mean, Ponomaryov just makes it look too easy. h6, pretty rare you see this kind of perfect, perfect pawns rolling, but you know, Bruzon, the, the sacrifice was, was pretty good and Bruzon had reacted so badly um, that White was able to achieve this kind of game. Maybe here, you know, when I was first looking at it, I was like, maybe Black could have sacked here just to break up the the hegemony of pawns. But you know, this is over. Maybe throwing a little check. Black, you know, even, let's even say e4 if possible. But I mean, just takes and White's got too many pawns. Maybe it was best chance though, but rook c8. Okay, yeah, it was over. So, um, yeah, I mean, what can you say? I mean, a fantastic game by Ponomaryov. Just you know, picking up the the bishop here is going to be too easy. Rook rook d5, maybe just knight c8, knight c6. So so anyway, yeah, I mean, Ponomaryov just killing it with the technique, really showing how to put the pressure on in the the blitz tiebreaker, playing super fast. Sacking the piece, and it's always easier to attack than defend when there's less time to play with. So a really nice game by Ponomaryov, and it's going to be pretty interesting to see if he's uh, he can maintain his momentum here. You know, after such a long match in round four. This is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in.